Hey guys, Wags with Iron Man 4x4. Today we're gonna to be working on a foam cell pro install on this Lexus LX470, and trust me, things are gonna get messy. So AHC stands for Automatic Height Control, and it's a great system from Lexus, but it's really expensive to work on. And as these trucks start to age and get a little bit older, the system starts to soften up or it needs maintenance or it leaks and it needs a full on repair. Well, that's really expensive to roll your Lexus into the dealership. Plus the other thing too is you can't really add or change any of the suspension components with that hydraulic system in there. So we're gonna pull that system out. That way we can get the performance Ironman 4x4 Foam Cell Pro suspension installed. We'll have extra carrying capacity, extra on-road and off-road performance. It should go without saying, but you always before you get into these projects want to take your four corner measurements so you know where your truck is so you can see the change after you get your new suspension installed the one way you do not want to take that measurement is never go from the ground up to your fender because the tire depending on how much air pressure you have it's not going to be consistent we can sit here and take air out of this tire and it's just gonna lower the truck and you're gonna get a false reading. You always wanna take a measurement from a fixed point on the wheel, whether that's center of hub or anywhere on the rim. I'll clip the tape measure tooth on the bottom of the rim, go straight up through the center of the hub, get it straight up and down, and then check it. And that's 31 and a half. So however you take your measurement is up to you. Use a fixed point and make sure you note on your measurements where you actually took the measurement from so you don't forget. If you're using a lift, please make sure you're sitting down on your locks. If you're doing this on your garage floor, super easy too. Just make sure that your wheels are chalked. You can set it and chalk it for the front, but when we move to the back, make sure you pop that e-brake off. So I just wanna show you because if I didn't know anything about this system, I might jump in here and take these bolts off, there's this hydraulic fluid line with this saddle piece that fits over the top of the shock. Now the top of that threaded shock stem is hollow and that's how the fluid flows in and out. You do not wanna start here because this is under high pressure. If you break this loose, it will spray hydraulic fluid all over the place. So we're gonna locate dampening force control actuators. You can remember it by saying Dufka. Here's the driver's side front Dufka I was telling you about. And if you look right up in here, here's your reservoir in your tank, but this is that little bleeder nipple that looks just like what you'd find on your caliper when you're bleeding brakes. And it's got a rubber cap, so I'm just gonna take that little rubber piece off. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench so that we can open this thing up and some tubing. Now, I didn't have any clear tubing, but I did have some breather hose from our Iron Man 4x4 Monster Winch, and it's gonna fit perfect. And I'm gonna break that loose. So as the flow starts to lower down, I'm just opening it up just a little bit more. All right, pull the hose away. I'll tighten it back down for now. There we go, we can move on to the other side. So we're also gonna open up and drain the rear Dufkas. So if you go to the middle of your rear passenger door, it's sitting right up underneath. So I will hook up the hose, take my 10 mil, crack it loose. And I'm just controlling the flow with my wrench. So we're gonna leave our AHC system in, all the hard lines and the components. We're not gonna go through the paint or ripping all that out. We're just gonna cap everything off. But I'm still gonna put these little rubber caps over the Dufka nipples. All right, pop your hood, locate your AHC reservoir. It's here on the front right side of the vehicle. Grab an oil pan and something to suck some fluid out with. Uh, we got one of these syringe suckers. It's like the world's worst grease gun uh, down at Harbor Freight. They're dirt cheap. Uh, so grab something to remove fluid or, oh hey, or if you have an enemy that lives nearby, ask to borrow a shop vac. That will also work. So we're going to unscrew the cap, set that aside, stick your finger down, pop this filter out. Make sure you get your hose in the lowest part of that reservoir. Yeah, if it's not, you'll start sucking air. Put that over there. And then when you squeeze this back on your oil pan, be careful because you don't want to spray this all over. So this is just kind of a rinse and repeat. 
Keep doing it until you get all that fluid out of there. Before we unhook the top of the hydraulic line from the shock, we're gonna remove this inner splash guard here. So you've got a bunch of plastic clips, so grab a plastic clip removal tool. Alrighty then. So before we unhook this hydraulic line, I'm gonna take some rags and kind of just lay them out in here because this may make a mess. It shouldn't, we've drained out the reservoir, we've unhooked the dufkas, but when we take this line out, there might still be some residual hydraulic fluid. So we're gonna take these 12 mil bolts out, take that saddle off the top of the shock post, and then we're gonna bring it back here. We'll zip tie it off, let it drain out. All right, that's loose. And again, just a reminder, if you were to do this while it was under pressure, it would just spray right out of there all over the place. So I'm gonna twist it back and forth. Look at that, hardly any fluid came out. That is awesome. All right, so what I have done here is grabbed a zip tie. I'm gonna grab two and we'll tuck this away because we're gonna leave the all the hard lines for the AHC because taking that out would be a nightmare. A couple things to think about. You want it away from the steering column because that's gonna be moving around. You wanna keep it away from your upper control arm because that moves around and you wanna keep it away from heat. So if you just zip tie it back like this, we'll pull this off at the end of the install. Everything should be out. So I'm gonna grab another zip tie, double it up, and I think we're good to go. So this is how these hydraulic controlled shocks work. This shock stem at the top, it's threaded. It's got a 22 millimeter nut, but the stem is actually hollow and that's how the hydraulic fluid flows down, okay? Easy enough, right? But you might have an issue getting a 22 millimeter socket and socket wrench on here because of the clearance. Your pinch weld for the body is right here. I actually have a really nice uh, swivel head ratcheting 22 millimeter wrench, and that's perfect for doing this. So I'm gonna get that up there on that. I'm gonna take a set of channel locks. I'm gonna lock off the shock body because on these shocks are actually connected. <clears throat> there it goes. Awesome. All right, we're gonna pry this guy up out of the way. Grab a pry bar. Oh, mama. Now we can get the lower shock bolt out. We are gonna throw a 19 millimeter socket and uh, a 19 on the back of the nut. And we will get this guy ripped out of here. It's time to get the heck out of my face. Now don't drop it, cause this thing's still full of goo. Weep. Toyota's finest liqueur. Okay, we got our front Foam Cell Pro shock. These in the front and the rear, they're both eyelet to stem style shocks. So make sure you check your part numbers. There's a four, five, seven, nine, five FE that goes in the front and the nine sixes go in the back. So to build this, you wanna throw the boot on first. You've got two washers that are flat with a hole, they're concave. And you've got two washers that have these locating shoulders on them and that's just a centering washer. That's what's going to go up into the frame and that just pilots it in and holds it center so it doesn't wobble around on you. Then you're gonna take a bushing, drop one of these piloted locating washers on top of it. Then you're gonna drop another one of these with a locating washer on top. So if you pretend my fingers are the frame, then it's the second bushing covered by the flat washer on the top and the nut. So we'll drop this down here. Always work on the top first because the geometry of the shock position when it's bolted down to the lower control arm and the top, it's not dead nuts 90 perfect. So do the top first, get it all bolted down, then we'll pull the shock body down and plug the bottom eyelet uh, into the lower control arm and bolt that through. Okay, so set that there. Then it's bushing on top of that. And you kind of want to twist that bushing too to get it over the shoulder because you want as much threads showing as possible. Push that washer down and then that nut. And you just want to kind of push it all together so you can grab a couple threads. Awesome. Just trust me on this, install the top first. It makes it way easier. Then you can lower the shock down, get that bolt through. You can just hold the nut and spin the bolt. There you go. So make sure to leave the bottom loose because we don't wanna tighten this bolt and that bushing down. 
with the suspension at full droop hanging in the air. We want to tighten it when it's at its natural ride height. So we'll tighten the top, leave the bottom loose till the truck's back down on the ground. Easiest way to tighten this down is a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I've got a gear wrench. We'll start to tighten it down and that shaft isn't gonna spin yet. As soon as it starts to twist on you, you need to stop and grab something to lock down on those flats to keep that stem from spinning. So I've got a good set of vice grips locked down super tight on those flats. And again, it's a 19, I'm gonna start just tightening the thing down. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn this nut and lock it all the way down until it doesn't turn. It'll bottom out on the threads, then you know you're done. It's very important that you tighten this top nut all the way down. If you leave it loose, you won't suck this lower bushing up into your um, shock perch. And then when your truck is under compression, it can actually skip out of it. So that's why we ask that you tighten it all the way down. And there you go, it's all the way down. I said this is about seven or eight threads. So, but you'll know, once it's tight, you can't turn it anymore. Lock that boot off. All right, now that the shocks are in, all we need to do is pull our rags off our hydraulic lines. They're done dripping and nice and dry, and we'll put the splash guards back in. When I do this, I start with this threaded stud. So I'll put the splash guard back over that. That'll hold it in place. Cool. I'll get the passenger side buttoned up and then we can work on the torsion bars. Now, before we just start ripping stuff apart, dragging these stock torsion bars out, there's a couple things I wanna show you. This is your stock torsion bar here on the driver's side. It ties into this torque arm. And at the end of the torque arm, you've got this tensioning bolt. And this bolt, if you turn it clockwise, it will actually add preload to this bar, causing more twist to twist on your front control arm to actually raise your vehicle up. Now the driver's side and the passenger side are gonna be set to a different height, obviously because you've got different weights on the vehicle. You've got a heavy gas tank on one side, or maybe on your specific truck, you might have water tanks or a tent or something heavy in a different area that we don't know about. So what we're gonna do is before we rip this apart, grab yourself something flat like a straight edge or even like a speed square or something, lay it across the head of that bolt and find something that you can put a co-witness mark on. That way, when we come back and get this all reassembled, I can hold that straight edge and go, that is exactly where it was before. Now you need to pull your front and mid skid plates off. I think they're all 12 millimeter. Come on, you. So now we can go ahead and remove this torque arm bolt. 30 millimeter saw. So I use my impact gun on this, but I would say don't go super fast because in the past I've had it where if you get a piece of dust or a burr or something backing it out, it will trash your thread. So take your time, go slow. So take note on this saddle piece here that the hole is not centered in it, it's actually offset to the forward side of the truck. Luckily, Lexus did us a favor and put an arrow, so that means hole goes towards the forward side of the truck. So when I pull this out, I'm gonna label it as being on the driver's side so I know where it goes. All right, passenger side's out. So now we've got the back of the torsion bar loose with the torque arm hanging free. This is a 22 millimeter nut on each side, and these bad boys are torqued down. So grab yourself a big wrench or a breaker bar if you have it. You're going to need to hang on these things. All right, I got a little bit longer wrench on here. This is a long bolt that goes all the way through to the front side of the control arm. This one back here sits there. So if you need to grab a 22 wrench to hold it, you can, but it spins right off nice and easy. This one, same thing, I'll hold it with my hand. Don't hurt yourself. Cool. So I'll push this outside bolt through and out. So when you're trying to break these things loose, you just want to tap on each side. Tap, tap here, tap, tap there. Here, tap, there, tap, everywhere, tap, tap. Okay, so that is starting to wiggle out, which is good news. I'm gonna to go to the back here and adjust this. Lower that torque arm back so we can pull the assembly. Give us some more room to work here.
And then when you take these down, aim the front side of the torsion bar to the inside of the truck and down low, and you can pull it out just like that. You wanna clean out your splines because when you go to put the Iron Man torsion bar in, if you've got a piece of gravel in there or burr or dirt, it makes it really difficult for the two to mate. A little brake clean in there. Don't spray yourself in the face. You can get a little uh, wire bristle brush in there, clean them out. So we'll do that on both sides, on the rear and the front. So I've got my torsion bars laid out. This is my stock Toyota torsion bar, and this is the Ironman 4x4 Toyota 50 bar. Now, you've got a spline tooth count on each one of these. Same amount of teeth, the same amount of teeth on the spline cup. On the OEM spline cup, you're gonna have a mark here, and that mark is where there's a flat inside that cup, and it's missing a tooth. Toyota wants you to match up the white stripe where that missing tooth gap is. Same thing with Iron Man. We give you a mark right here, so that's where you're gonna plug it together. Another trick on setting these up is take a little bit of grease, or I actually like to use anti-seize, and we're gonna put a little bit around the spline cup just to help it, because we don't want things to rust together. Don't over-grease them, but a little bit's okay. So Iron Man labels are torsion bars. LH, left hand, that's gonna be our driver's side. The RH is the passenger side. I have an L and a Z with a twist mark. That goes towards the rear. The front side has nothing. So let's put a little anti-seize on the front and rear, front spline cup and this rear torque arm. So we're gonna put this together for the front right now. I'm gonna line up those co-witnessed marks. That slides together just like that. Feed it right up here. The driver's side one's gonna be near the catalytic converter. And that should give you plenty of room. We'll get our torque arm up in there. We can see that mark. And I'll bring the torsion bar around. Cool. All right, so before we get any further, we wanna make sure and install our bracket 100 reinforcement bracket. This is gonna help us strengthen the lower control arm. Because these torsion bars are so heavy duty, we don't wanna get stress fractures in our lower control arm, so we provided an extra bracket to help kind of strengthen that area up. So we'll slide that off to the side there, feed this guy through, and that's gonna sit. So we've set our Bracket 100 hardware off to the side for now because we're gonna get this all put together and torqued down, then we'll come back and we'll drill this out and get the hardware put in. So to get this thing to fit, lower your torque arm down and try to get it all the way back behind this flange and get it all the way pushed back. That'll give you enough room on the front end to get everything to bolt up, to slide over that smaller bolt. Once it's over, you can lower it back down and push it forward. There we go. Now we can get our bracket 100 in position, slide that long through bolt, get everything pulled back forward. So grab yourself a 22 millimeter socket and a 22 wrench for the back side, and we'll get this locked down. All right, we wanna lock these things down to 165 foot pounds. Cool. All right, we got the torque arm in. We're gonna put the swivel. I've got the correct swivel. Again, don't forget, this hole is oriented towards the front of the truck on the Lexus. We've got an arrow that tells us that. I got a little carried away here waiting for the cameraman to get his stuff together, so I just started painting this. But I'm gonna put a little anti-seize here on these flats because it's a wear point, so why not? I'm also gonna do these flats as well. All right, to get this swivel back in place, we're gonna feed it right through here, and then those little flats will lay down right in there like that. Cool, now we can grab the bolt, and that goes right up there, and it threads in. I'll grab a 30 millimeter socket. Okay, that's in, we're gonna start to tighten this up. Don't forget what we're gonna try to do is get the head of this bolt with that co-witness sight marking that we made earlier. Just cope a little bit more. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. All right, we got our driver and passenger side torsion bars all put back together. So now what we need to do is grab our straight edge here and see how far off we are from our witness marks we made earlier. So I'm getting close, it needs to go to the top of that mark there. So go ahead and tighten down a little bit more. Perfect, same thing on the driver's side. Cool, there we go. 
And don't forget, it's not that big of a deal if it isn't perfect right now. Once we get the truck on the ground, we'll take our measurements, we'll see how far off we are, left to right, how much rake we have, then we can still make more adjustments. All right, torsion bars are locked back down. We've got our bracket 100 bolted in here. The last thing we need to do is get it drilled out. One thing before we do that, I just wanna take a second and talk about these control arms. And we address it in the instructions that came with your bracket 100 too, but you definitely wanna to look to see if you've got any fractures or minor cracking in this area on your lower control arm. This was kind of a weak point for the 100 series and the LX 470s. So please do an inspection, double check them, get yourself a rag, spray a bunch of brake cleaner on it, wipe this all down, inspect it, make sure it's good. If you have cracking in here, do not install the Ironman suspension. You need to get that fixed first. You either need to replace them or get them repaired. So when you're drilling for the 100 series Land Cruiser, there's already a pre-existing hole in the control arm. That's pretty simple. Just grab your hardware, bolt it down. That'll suck this flange down on the Lexus, it does not have any pre-drilled holes. So what we'll do is we'll grab a small C-clamp. You can use any kind of clamp to get this thing locked down. You can even use vice grips if you have them. Just wanna leave yourself enough room with your clamp that you can get your drill gun in here. While saying hot metal in the eye sounds like a super cool album title, it actually happening to you is not fun. So put some iPro on before you drill these things out. So I'm gonna grab one set of hardware. So I got a bolt, it's a 16 millimeter socket that you'll need to tighten that down. Split washer, flat washer on the bolt side, we'll slide it up. I'm gonna get that in as hand to hig it as I can. And then I'm gonna grab a 16 millimeter socket. I'm gonna tighten this thing down. Okay, it's supposed to be about 35 foot pounds. Perfect. We'll put our serrated nut right there. Get our hardware, grab our 16. To get our diff drop installed, we've got to pull out some of our OEM hardware and this cross member. So if you're working on a garage floor, grab yourself a jack or jack stand and you're gonna to wanna to brace and support your front differential. I'm gonna use this jack stand here. Cool, once you get that secured, we'll start removing some hardware. If you have a 19 millimeter wrench, put it right here on the bolt head. This is gonna remove our left-hand side cross member bolt and a 19 millimeter deep dish socket. All right, that's gotta come out and we'll pull these four bolts out to get our cross member out. It's gonna be a 17 millimeter wrench on the back and a 17 millimeter socket on the front. Pull that out and then we're gonna wanna hang on to all of our hardware, just set it aside because a lot of it we're gonna be reusing. All right, now we're gonna remove this M14 right here. It's a 19 millimeter. We're gonna drop that and the washer out. We got one more of those here on the rear right-hand side. There is a nut on the top. Okay, now it's time to install gear. So we're gonna take our new Ironman 4x4 cross member. We're gonna fit it up here, right around our bracket 100s slide it into position and then we're going to take our four original OEM bolts and we're going to reuse those. And then we've got a flat washer here and a nut. Same thing on the other side. Cool, that is going to look awesome. All right, now grab yourself 17 millimeter wrench and socket and get these bad boys tightened back down. When you're installing the Iron Man cross member, make sure that this doesn't get caught up and all cattywampus. So if you need to kind of just tap that bushing over because after this is all set up and these bolts are locked down, now we're gonna start to lower that jack and bring it down. And you'll watch as we turn this down, see how that's already coming down. The entire differential is starting to drop. All right, so we've lowered our differential down over here. So now this matches up. So whether you need to go up or down, you also might need to grab like a, a pin or a big screwdriver to try to push that back because you want to line it up. So now what you can do is lower your jack down 
and the front of that differential should start to fall. Take your puck, you're gonna slide it in between. You don't need the nut anymore, so we'll throw that away. Run the bolt up there, and then you're gonna kinda wanna wiggle around until you can grab a thread. Grab a 19 millimeter socket, and let's just spin it up, but not lock it down. Cool, we'll just let that hold that in place. All right, now we can jump back to the rear right-hand side diff mount right there. So we're gonna take the Iron Man bolt that was included in the kit with that large spring washer. Drop your spring washer down on there. We'll take the OEM big flange washer. I'll get my spacer right in there like that. I'll go ahead and run that bolt up. The other trick too is before you get the bolt, put the spacer up towards the top of the bolt. There you go, now run your bolt up so it doesn't get locked locked out, and then you can use your jack and jack it back up, and hopefully we can get the differential. You might have to push on it a little bit, but we're trying to get it to line back up. So this rear right-hand side bolt is a little hard to align. So what I'm gonna do is put a pry bar here and get my uh, gun on the bolt, and I think if I just let it spin a little bit and push over, I think I can get it to spin up in there. So we'll set the nut back up there. I'm gonna spin the bolt and see if I can get the nut to suck down. Okay, still wanna leave it a little bit loose until we're ready to lock it all down. So that's it, I'm gonna lower my jack and slide it out of the way. This is a 22 millimeter socket. This is gonna be a 19 millimeter. And front left is also gonna be a 19. Now all we need to do is use the remaining plastic spacers to space our front skid plate down. All right, these are the spacers for your skid plate to drop it down. You've got three of these metal spacers. They go one, two, three. You've got two of these guys, they're plastic. They go on the sides. And you've got this big puck right here. It goes right in the center. We've also got six bolts. You've got flat washers and split washers. So again, one, two, three, four, five on the side and six in the back. And then I guess we included these shorter bolts, washers for you. That's just, we're just trying to be nice. You know, I mean, maybe you're building a go-kart or have other projects like a gingerbread house you're trying to bolt together. So you can use those really for almost anything you want. Right, I'm gonna start with the back with this big puck right there. Come on, needle nose fingers. We'll take this other plastic one on the driver's side. Same thing on the passenger side. And these last three metal spacers go right here in front. Last one over here, and these are a 13 millimeter socket. All right, let's get this middle skid plate put on. And you're just gonna use your factory hardware on the front here. Spin that on finger tight and grab yourself a 12 mil socket. So the last two M8 bolts that are a little shorter than the other six that came with the kit, those are gonna go right here. They bolt up into the cross member. That's what's gonna hold this mid skid plate up. So the other tip I would tell you to do is put those in first with your skid plate, then tighten the OEM hardware last. Well, folks, that wraps it up for the front of the truck. We're ready to move on to the back. All right, welcome to the back of the truck. We're almost done. We got to pull shocks and springs. The coils are really easy to get out. It's these dang shocks that are hard because the access is so tight and limited. So don't forget to pull your spare tire out because you're going to need a place to stand. If you have yourself a quarter inch ratchet with a swivel head and a shorty 12 mil socket, that will get the job done. If you don't, beg, borrow, and steal. All right, we're on the rear driver's side. First thing we're gonna do is unhook this ABS plug right there, just to give us a little more clearance. There's a plastic clip tab on the bottom side under here, so I'm just gonna take some pliers, push the flats in. There we go. I'm gonna tuck that guy right back in there. Give us a little bit of room. Right, I'm gonna take a rag, and that'll catch all the juice. All right, take your 12 mil swivel head ratchet, but you can see why that swivel head is so important to have. Ooh, come on, set down. All right, we're on. Get out of there. Now we're gonna grab a pry bar and we will pop up and see just a little bit of fluid came out. 
tuck that guy out of the way. So the tool for the job, just like all the other ones, is a 22 millimeter swivel head ratcheting wrench. And then you can either grab yourself some big channel locks, or I'm actually gonna use this smaller pipe wrench. I'm gonna let this pipe wrench swing into this bump stop and it can hold that for me. There we go, awesome. So the other thing, I'm gonna take the pipe wrench down and the reason why I didn't unhook the bottom of the shock is we still have some weight on our rear axle pulling this shock down. So what I'm gonna do is get a jack stand and support the rear axle. And you're only gonna get about four or five clicks of throw on this. And you can see if you look right here above that bushing and the washer, as I'm loosening this, the weight of the axle is pulling, pulling all of this down. There it goes, nuts out. All right, so paying attention to my brake line and my breather line, I'm gonna lower this down. Oh, also, I might've forgot to mention, make sure your emergency brake is off. You do not want that engaged. If this starts to get tight on you and you're worried, like better safe than sorry, so I'll show you how to unhook this. You wanna unhook your brake line bracket right here. It's a 12 mil. We'll pop this guy loose and it'll give us a little more wiggle room as we drop this rear axle. Okay, so that's a little loose there. I'm also gonna unhook it down here. There we go, now we got all that extra play. And I'm gonna unhook the breather bracket, which is right up here. Follow the tube up, bracket's right here. Cool, all right. That could hang there. All right, so we bought ourselves some more room here. I'm gonna lower down even more. Cool, all right, that should be plenty of room now. I like to unhook my sway bar links before we get too far into the job, because if you don't, as your rear axle droops, this sway bar on the 100 series or the LX470s, this elbow here is gonna hit into the shock body. So you wanna undo this 12 mil nut at the top of the bushing stack on the stem. Ain't you listening? He just done told you where to loosen it from. He says do it here. So do it, don't be an idiot. All right, grab a 12 mil wrench and spin that nut off. Rice a roni, the San Francisco treat. All right, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now with both sides of the sway bar loose, it's gonna drop out of the way. Now we can pull the lower shock bolt out. It's a 17 millimeter socket. So grab a pry bar if you have to, and we're gonna pry this shock off. Okay, shocks are out. Now we can lower our axle down on our jack as much as we're comfortable with. Again, we've loosened ABS, brake lines, breather tube, all that, so we're good. So I'm gonna pull down on this side a little bit. It's the same deal over here on the passenger side. So I'm gonna pull down a little bit and get that pigtail off the lower perch. And there we go. Now, our isolator came down with the coil. That's not a big issue. We'll put it on the new coil when we put it back in. All right, so I've got the coils out and I wanted to show you something here. This is the OEM rear driver side coil and the OEM rear passenger side coil and our gas tank is on our driver's side. So what Toyota or Lexus did is they actually made the driver's side coil a little bit taller to push back a little bit more and keep your vehicle as level left to right as possible. So the same theory applies to the Ironman 4x4 coils. Our driver's side coil, again, is just a little bit taller. So we always wanna put the taller coil on the side of the vehicle that's gonna have the most weight, which is our driver's side. And it says right here, it's actually in this case, the near side coil. DS stands for driver, NS stands for near side. It's because the Aussies call the passenger side the near side. These coils are made for right-hand drive trucks. So in this case, we'll swap them. So the passenger side coil, which is taller, is actually gonna go on our driver's side. Hopefully that made sense. All right, we're gonna grab our near side coil and put it on our driver's side. And to do this, you wanna wiggle it up over this isolator. Now, the OEM isolator pad is still sitting up in there. And the Ironman coil is a lot taller than stock, so we really gotta get this side to droop down. Another trick you can do if you're having a hard time getting the Ironman coil in is you could take another jack stand or your floor jack if you're doing it on the garage 
and with your axle supported, go over here to the passenger side and start to jack that side up. That will let your driver's side completely droop down. Cool. Yep. That went in, and then what you want to do is spin the pigtail. So you're here, spin it to the stop, and then back it off about a finger's width because if the end of the pigtail's jammed up against that stop, it could create a squeak point. We don't want that. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side. Again, we're putting our DS coil on the passenger side. If your isolator pad came out, don't forget to put that on there. Don't leave it in isolation. So I'm gonna grab a 22 and a 19, and I'm gonna loosen this lower trailing arm bushing. That will let the axle droop down a little bit more. And it's actually good for your bushings. Once we get the truck all set and back down on the ground, the natural ride height is gonna change. So we'll torque it back down when the truck is sitting down. And with that loosened, this coil will go right in. All right, so the rear foam cell pro shocks are a 45796 FE. We're gonna extend them out a little bit. And I like to take the boot off and push this external bump stop down. There we go. That way it's not in the way and we can get full thread engagement. Boots back on, we'll grab the hardware kit. I'll show you how this fits together. It's pretty much exactly like the front. You are gonna take a large washer cupped up like that. You're gonna take a big fat bushing, slam that down there like that. We're gonna take a piloted centering washer Lay it cup down. This guy cups up. Bushing. Big washer. And nylock flange nut at the top. What do you think? All right, let's get this rear driver side shock in. I've got the lower bushing stack set up. Washer, bushing, piloting washer. So I'm gonna leave the shock compressed. Don't forget, foam cell pros don't have a high nitrogen charge in them, so we can collapse them down, which makes it way easier for install. Always start at the top with these stem styles because if you hook the eyelet on the bottom, it's not gonna be perfectly perpendicular to the upper mount. And then that means you're gonna have to install it like this, and you might not get all the threads that you need to get that nut on there. So make it easy on yourself. Get it collapsed down. We'll bring it up through here and into the mount. And you'll feel that washer pilot in. And once that's in there, grab your other piloted washer. Next, we can go bushing, washer. If you're doing the install by yourself, you can rest the bottom of the shock up against the caliper right there. Once that's all pushed down and together, you can feel you've got some exposed threads. Take that 19 millimeter flange nylock nut, and we're gonna try to spin it on and get some threads. So now that I've spun the nut down on the threads, I need to grab vice grips and a 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I'm gonna unhook this connector, and I'll tell you why. Because this wire harness is in my way. I don't like it. So I've got that out. I don't wanna break this. There we go. Okay, that's loose. I'm gonna slide that up and out of the way. So you can see I've got my vice grips and they're locked onto those flats on the threaded shock stem. And I've got my 19 millimeter gear inch underneath set up and ready to tighten down. I'm actually gonna come back down here to the shock, compress it. That way I can hold it at a 90 degree perpendicular to the upper mount. Cause see what I was talking about, how if you get it all torqued over to one side, all cattywampus, it's just gonna make it harder on you to get it locked down. And we wanna make sure this sucks down flat into that upper perch on the frame. By the way, there's no torque setting on these shock top nuts. You just wanna tighten them all the way down. The nut will bottom out on the threads, then you know you've got it tight enough. All right, so we'll extend the foam cell pro shock down and you wanna make sure that the eyelet is mounted towards the back of the vehicle, the mount there. The sticker's on the back side, so that's an easy way to remember. Paint some anti-seize on here. Keep that from 
potentially rusting on there. All right, we're gonna use the shock as a lever. It's all tied up top, bring it around. Awesome. I'll go grab a dead blow. Same thing on the passenger side. All right, we'll grab the lower shock mount bolt. Spin that on and we'll just spin it down, but leave it loose because we need to tighten that bushing when the truck's on the ground. Same thing passenger side. All right, coils are in, shocks are in. Now what we need to do, let's jack up the rear axle and we will get our sway bar hooked back up. All right, we've got our axle lifted up a little bit. So I am gonna get this sway bar back into position and we will put the bushing and washer in and this 12 millimeter nut. And you just wanna be able to hook some threads here. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side, then we'll tighten it down. Now on the passenger side, you're gonna have to pull down on the sway bar because we have the other side already in the mount. Bushing washer and 12 mil nut. I'll grab my gear wrench and we will lock those guys back down. So I'm gonna grab a rag and just try to clean up any extra hydraulic fluid that was sort of seeping around here. And then on this driver's side, we want to go and hook all of our plugs back up and that's gonna snap down and that ride height sensor is gonna go right back in. And this ABS, we're gonna push him back around and get him plugged back in too. And we did the same thing over on the passenger side. Got a 12 on my quarter inch ratchet. And that one is back on. At this point, I like to just do a little uh, recap in my own mind. So we've got shock top nut is tightened down, locked down. Lower shock bolt is still loose. We'll tighten it on the ground. Both sides are good. We've got ABS hooked up. We've got our old hydraulic line uh, housing sitting on top of the stem, so I won't go anywhere. We've hooked up our ride height sensor. We've hooked up our ABS lines, breather, brake line brackets are hooked up, coils are in, isolators are in, top isolator pads are in. We loosened our lower links right here. We'll tighten those up when the truck's on the ground. And as always, the last step is you wanna tighten everything, all your bushing related stuff when the truck is on the ground. Now we cheated a little bit. We're putting it on our alignment rack, but if you have a four post lift, something where the truck has to be under its own weight, that'll work. I like to put it up on the alignment rack because then I can get a little extra torque as I tighten things down. And don't forget about your lower links. That's a 24 nut and a 19 bolt. Both sides. All the hardware is installed and done, but we need to unhook a couple wire harnesses from the AHC system so it doesn't throw a bunch of lights on your dash for you. I'll show you how to do that. Step one on your dash is grab under here and you wanna pinch and just pull back. All right, get our floor mat out of here. Now we're gonna take this footrest out and this, just get your hand underneath and pull up. It's got a couple uh, brackets in here on these metal studs. They'll spin off like that. I'll plug those guys back in. We'll get this trim piece on the rocker pulled up. So just slide your hand underneath. You got a couple clips and you wanna pull straight up. All right, now back here on this little kick plate, there is a plastic nut. Just pull and spin it off like that. And now this guy just pulls back and out just like that. Now we'll pull our weather stripping back, start at the bottom, and I'll pull it back this way. And then I'm gonna just let this tuck right up here and hang out the door. We've got this little eight mil Phillips combo screw that we'll take out. All right, slide back in the driver's seat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our hands up on this side. We've got a bunch of those classic yellow Toyota clips that we're gonna pop back. So you just wanna pull slowly. Same thing, just pull back. You're gonna have this little shroud from your ignition that's gonna pop off. Down the sides. And you'll feel the whole thing come loose, but it's gonna be held together by a couple wire harnesses. There we go. That is out 
on the right hand side. And then over here, we're gonna unhook these, but first we're gonna take our cell phone and I'm gonna take a, what's called a photograph. So I'm gonna push that down and out. So it's easier if you have a pick, cause then you can kind of help push the front of it out as you depress that tab down, you can just rock it right out. We got one more down here, that's a push down. Cool. All right, so all the wire harnesses that we need unhooked are unhooked. What I'm not gonna unhook is the pull cable for the hood and the gas cap. So we're gonna take this metal shield off and these are all 10 mil. We gotta take this AC crotch vent housing out. So there's an eight mil. I'm gonna remove this guy up here. So we'll wiggle this thing pushing to the right and it'll pop out like that and then pull it down and then we will start to pull to the left. And then we will twist this top down and out. This is the AHC ECU control module right here. We're gonna unhook all three of those. One, two, and three. There you go. And we'll just tuck them up out of the way. Now we just gotta get it put back together. And that guy goes over the top. And uh, this happens a lot, these stock Toyota switches, so just push them right back in. Back in there, and then it's, if you forgot, grab that picture that you just took, you can reference that. One, two, three. Walk it right back down with your thumb. Try to line those up and snap back into place. That tucks right back in there like that. Truck is done. We got our foam cell pro two inch kit put on the LX470. This kit also works on the Land Cruiser 100 series. This thing is awesome, feels great, looks great, rides even better. If you wanna pick one up or have questions, go to ironman4x4america.com. We will help you out over there. Thank you.